Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can utilize the Unreal Live Link feature to seamlessly preview your crowd simulation animation and transfer actors and motions to Unreal Engine 5 and assemble everything in a sequencer to finish off. We're going to utilize the Data Link feature to demonstrate this powerful and efficient workflow between iClone and Unreal. Let's cover the basic settings first. If you're not familiar with Unreal Live Link yet, please head over to our Religion Courses page to learn more about how to set it up and get it running. When using LiveLink, it's a good idea to enable the progressive texture loading feature first in order to conserve system resources for better performance. Also ensure that everything is updated to the latest version. Auto setup should also be at least version 1.33 and LiveLink should be 1.60 or higher. Let's start off by transferring our base mesh to iClone by right clicking it and choosing Transfer to iClone Merged. Then in iClone, we can quickly generate a navigation mesh in order to determine where the crowd will be able to walk. We don't want our crowd to be walking on the fountain, so let's adjust the area minimum size value until it no longer covers the fountain region. Diagnostic mode here allows you to check nav mesh distribution. Once that's done, let's create a scattering crowd under the Create menu. Then choose Random and pick Object Mode. The nav mesh will be the target of our crowd generation, so we'll choose that. The blue markers here represent the position of crowd members, and you can tweak the various slider values underneath to get the results that you want. You can click Generate Placement as many times as you want until you get a distribution that you like. Next, we can find some actor core characters from the content manager and drag them to the actor pool. For their behavior, we can load in some dedicated crowd simulation IMD files and then adjust their respective settings in order to have the crowd move around more instead of idling. To learn more about the whole crowd simulation process, please check out the dedicated tutorials. Once you've deployed your actors, go ahead and start Motion Director to view the simulation results. If you notice that some characters have a foot sliding issue, you can simply pick the character and use the lock feet feature to stabilize the walking animation. However, keep in mind that this will use up more system resources, so use it sparingly. If you're satisfied with the result, go ahead and open up the MD Control Center to record the animation. Be sure that you select all of the actors that you want to record animation for. After recording, you'll see a motion clip in the timeline for each character. You can easily set the project end frame to the end of the clip by using the dedicated button on the toolbar of the timeline. If you can't see a clip in the timeline, you'll want to switch the actor status to edit mode. Okay, that was easy enough to generate our crowd full of random actors. Now let's transfer the actors complete with the recorded motions to Unreal Engine via LiveLink and get them into our sequencer. In the LiveLink panel, we're going to use Scene Mode, Include Motions, and Choose Range, which will default to the project length we defined earlier. We're only doing the actors and their motions, so I'll deselect everything else and be sure to select Bake All Animation to Sequencer. This will transfer both actors and motions and place them simultaneously in the Unreal Sequencer. In the Transfer File settings, you'll also want to disable Place Assets in Scene since we're transferring them directly to the sequencer. If you don't need facial expressions on your actors, be sure to exclude Morph Targets to significantly speed up transfer time. Hit Transfer File when you're all set. The newest update utilizes multiple threading, which means that you can operate iClone earlier, even while the processing in Unreal is still progressing. Once everything is complete, you'll see that each actor and their corresponding motions have been imported to the sequencer, and you can play back to test them out. They are set to spawnable mode in Unreal, so they won't occupy your Unreal level space. You can also bring in some actor groups to your iClone scene as well. Here I'm bringing in one and testing out the randomly produced initial result.
You can also reposition your actor group according to the environment. Once you're happy, deselect everything except for the new actors in your scene and keep the same settings, only this time be sure to deselect exclude morph targets as in this case, we want them to maintain their talking and expressions. Once transfer is complete, you can once again play back and see that these particular actors are complete with expressions and the preset actor group performances. You'll be able to find all of the imported sequences in the RL level sequences folder. This allows you to separately transfer more than one sequence and then assemble them together in Unreal. Here I'm simply creating a new level sequencer and creating new subsequences so I can add in the separate takes for both my crowd simulation and actor group. As you can see, the results look fantastic and natural, all for something we randomly generated in a few minutes. You'll also find all of your actors and motions in the RL content folder, and you can still use the basic live link workflow with these resources to add and customize your scene further. That's it for this tutorial guys, I hope this helps you on getting a quicker and more efficient workflow in your Unreal projects. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.